I chose this band. I didn't choose this band. This band chose me. And it's actually really cool how we all met because it was at different times and um, it just, it was like supposed to be, you know? And as far as like why I want to wake up in the morning and play music with them, I think it's just because it feels good and I know we're working towards something bigger than just our music, you know? school that, that I met in a class was friends with Genevieve. My old band used to play um, shows with Jen's old band, so that's how I knew of her. I was never a huge fan of her old band, but we always thought that she was awesome. Like, me and my and the band I was in, we were like, wow, that girl can sing. Um, we all met and became friends and started hanging out. And another mutual, mutual friend of mine was friends with Dorian and brought Dorian in. I meet together and started jamming for fun back in the dorms at our college. And through those two mutual friends, we all, the three of us got connected and started hanging out for fun and writing songs just for fun. Maybe a few weeks after the last show that we had played with her band, uh, all three of them went to a girl's room on, our, on my floor in my dorms last year. And I went down and met all three of them that night and didn't think anything of it, just wanted to say hi to everybody and then maybe a month went by and I bumped into Jen at Union Station. That's so good. Yeah, and it was just like, it was just really good timing and so uh, she called, I think Mark and was like, hey, we should ask Mike to audition with us and then, and then I burned my hand. <laughs> and, yeah. and then I burned my hand at work and uh, we almost gave up on it. Yeah, and, and I couldn't I couldn't make it to practices or any rehearsals for a while. Yeah, well, we were, yeah, we he actually had to reschedule his audition I think like two or three times. Yeah. And we were like, I don't know man, I don't know. Fuck this kid. <laughs> I, was, I was shady. And then uh I came in and auditioned, they had a practice space and everything, just brought my drums and and with like the first I think twenty minutes we were already playing on a riff that I'd heard on one of the demos that they gave me and from that point forward I mean like it just I don't know everything clicked pretty quickly. As the months went by last year it just got more and more fun and songs got a lot better than we ever expected them to and really felt something with them and thought we could possibly put again a band together and do something with them. Yeah we used to rehearse about four times a week at a Old Frank Lloyd Wright factory. It's a piece of shit. <laughs> As you can see, this is your average toilet. Flush the guy. Come a little bit closer. Gotta reach your hand in and got this little contraption tied to the top of this way. Pull it up like that. Like butter, baby. Like butter. No heat at all. We slept one night and oh, almost worries. died, literally, because of uh, <laughs> hypothermia. Because we used to stay there and practice so late sometimes, you know, some of us had school, some of us had work, so we could meet up at night, and it got to be really late one night, and we're like, okay, we're just gonna crash here, you know, we'll wake up in the morning and get at it again, and... We used carpets. It was horrible. Like, <laughs> we used you could see our breath as we were trying to play. You wash your hands, you have to push these pedals with your knees, and water comes out uh, really fast, and I bought us soap, thank God. <laughs> but of course, we now have no paper towels for me to... Uh, I'm freezing now. This sucks. We walked to like Walgreens and bought like dog beds and like to sleep. I had, a, I had like a like a four by four probably like pink blanket, pink princess blanket, and and then we actually woke up out of no sleep and still rehearsed and I, I felt really accomplished that day. It was in Pilsen, which is uh, 
south of the city, south of the loop at least, uh, in a kind of an artsy up and coming neighborhood, it was like an L ride away, a few buses, a walk on top of that, you know, <laughs> under the highway, past the like really shady gas station. Like, Just to get to a freezing room. Yeah. And we used to make that walk together all the time. And yeah. It was fun, you know? It was hard, but I think it really brought us together as a group. A lot of people said we were crazy to be such a new band and go into such a professional level of recording with such an expensive producer like that, but I think I think we we didn't we weren't naive about it. We weren't like this is it. Like like we just wanted to have a really good solid record and a really good kickoff of a, a brand new band and do something different to separate us from all the other great bands in Chicago that are coming out. And I mean, not too many people are would find this smart to put the money and put the time that we did into this record as only being a band for like four months. But we thought that you got to separate yourself and stand out somehow and. I think this record really shows that we are different from a lot of bands that have been together for only four months. We're about to make three trips to the studio and back with equipment in my little adorable SUV. First unloading at Sean's, then back here for the rest of Mike's drums because Mike is in the suburbs, nowhere to be found, and then all the way south side to get the rest of our stuff. <sighs> I need a joint. I did good, man. Look at this. We're like the fucking Beverly Hillbillies. Look at this Tetris. This is how it's done. How it is done. Um, Sean's not answering, so I don't, don't want to like show up and be like, hey, we're moving in. Just let them know we're on our way for the first load. The biggest thing that was different for me, that was a lot of fun, was that we made it here in my house. <laughs> uh, I've never made a record at my house before. Um, I've done a little bit of recording here, but certainly not a record. Moving in here was a big transition for us because uh, we had been used to, you know, our own structure in our practice, which was, it was focused, but it wasn't as specific as it was was going to be, you know, when we moved into the studio, because, you know, Sean had a schedule, we had about, I think, I want to say, like, a five-hour block, is that what it was usually? Yeah. Something yeah. like that, like, we would come here, and for five hours, we would really get down to business, you know, like, he sat there, you know, he had headphones, uh, we were recording to his laptop, just as, like, scratch checks, so that we could, you know, review things later and say, you know, we really need to move this around or we should really cut this part. So then we took the whole summer just to like kind of relax and just focus on writing songs and just for fun. And, and then, like I said before, like in the fall when we wanted to do a record, he was kind of like just, we, we really trusted him and we, we've heard his work before and we liked how he just did his records and we thought he'd be a perfect match with what we were trying to do. So we called him up and asked him if that would be all right. And after he saw my band play, uh, we kind of talked for a little bit, and he said, that, you know, he was a fan of my voice. And so, I don't know, we kind of ran into each other here and there, and eventually we just hit it off, and we decided to ask him to do our record. We didn't really have, it kind of like started freaking us out because we didn't have that much time, and we were worried that, like, holy shit, we just got this new drummer, and we're going to record a full record in a month and we gotta like not only learn these songs but start actually playing them well so it's it's very i'm not does anyone else notice that because the temperature is different we're like yeah i'm so used to yeah. playing in ice yeah this is horrible we were kind of sloppy exactly. <laughs> we should just go play outside I, i'm so used to like my muscles being really tight and like really like almost having to play to stay warm <laughs> And so now that I don't so have that, <laughs> yeah, Sean, like we need to turn your heat off so we can play a little better tomorrow <laughs> into the environment we're used to. I think uh, the only maybe criticism I had, like the ones that felt a little bit uneasy, were maybe like the couple like swing ones. Um, what was the one that we played twice? The the, the '60s yeah. one or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're, those are hard feels to play. <laughs> Sean's a very good producer, and he hears everything and he was very one-on-one -on -one with how I play drums 
and it made it very interesting to hear his approach to me drumming. Uh, it really helped me out a lot, worked out a lot of kinks, especially with matching up on bass parts. And it was difficult, but it was, it's probably some of the best drums I've ever laid down, and I'm really, really content and happy with how it came out. If there's anyone who's going to be simple, it's Mike. I think that that's good. I think it calls for that. Because I also like, you know, Mark writes a lot of guitar stuff, and he, he, he tends to really fill out a lot of, like, the space and the colors with his guitar, which is really cool, too. But it's nice, then, to have, like, a drummer, you know, who kind of sits back and, and uh, kind of just gives, like, a foundation, I guess. The great thing about Sean, too, is, is the fact that he's a drummer, and, like, I mean, most... Um, traditional recordings will we'll start with the drums and build off that and he's got such a great ear with with the blueprint of songs in terms of like where the rhythms are coming from and everything and how to build off that so he picked up things like so quickly that we would have never even heard of that just weren't meshing and um, that kind of helped out a lot too with some of our parts and our rhythms and getting those together. I have really been put to a challenge, which was learning a lot of new music styles. A lot of the songs have uh, a breakdown or a bridge that's not consistent with the genre of music that you're hearing previous to it. Geez, uh, as far as the actual songs, uh, songs are real good and the arrangements uh, totally, I'd say 90% of the time make perfect sense to me. and then. Uh, there's like 10% of the time I'm lost a little bit and I don't know exactly what's happening and, and I think what we'll, we should do is just go song by song and I'll tell you the parts that I, it loses me and then you tell me if you've been having trouble with that part too or something like that and then maybe we should just try some different versions at it. I was really excited because I finally was we spent so much time writing these and it was like, okay, this is it, you know, this is my shot to like nail it. I have X amount of hours to finish this amount of songs, like, I gotta buck up and just do the very best I can. For example, in our last song, it's really the hardest part of the entire record for me, singing-wise. It's really high and really loud and it's just like, I mean, you'll see, I can't like give it away, but uh, it took everything I had, you know, to get there. And I got really frustrated in the beginning because it just wasn't hitting it and it just wasn't, it wasn't how I wanted it to feel or how, or how I wanted it to sound. And I guess I just had to like close my eyes and like bring myself back to the moment that I wrote it and why I wrote it. And then it just sort of like came out of me then. Making this record for me as an individual has been um, a real just out of this world experience. Um, you know, I grew up on the other side of the country, Rhode Island. Um, and, out, and out there, you know, there's no, I mean, there's a music scene, but there's no, in Chicago, it's huge, you know, there's goals to reach for bands, you know, you can see what you want to do, you know, you can put your eye on the ball and there's, you know, a future, but I think, I'm from, there's really not, I would have a dream as a kid, you know, it's like playing all the time, and no one really knows what happens after that. They're pulling from, like, a lot of different categories or styles of, of music that, a lot of them are styles that line up with, like, what I listen to, like, a lot of like kind of 60s influence, which is really cool. In Passing has a breakdown that's very um, Latin with like salsa, and I'd never played that style, so I definitely had to learn and pretty much by myself, like teach myself uh, a new style of music. So it kind of like goes like maybe a couple generations back. Maybe he was thinking, you know, Ryan Adams, like for this tune. And then, and then I kind of heard it maybe a step before that, which I heard Neil Young in it. And so it was kind of, it's kind of fun to be able, you know, maybe help him out and be like, yeah, I think, I think I know what you're trying to do, and maybe go back one step further and see if, if this makes even more sense, and then like kind of maybe contribute some of those sounds to that. That was cool. Well, right now, producer Sean O'Keefe just got in the mail his uh, 
All of White Gold Records. Figured, you know, I set the tone, we might add a little, we made our own company to use Gold Record to add the collection. Set the tone a little bit. Sean O'Keefe, Coming of Thieves, gold record? I, I mean, I think I equally enjoy working with tracking guitars in studio environments just as much as I like playing live. I've always loved recording and just really developing um, parts according to how the song should be and, and, and rather than just listening to yourself and trying to bust out as as much cool guitar parts as you can, just it's working with the other band members and, and how the songs fit together and you really hear everything. I mean, the clearest when you're when you're in a studio and you're in headphones and you hear everything perfectly instead of just a loud venue or a loud practice space and I, I think this is probably the, I would say I'm most proud of these guitar tracks that I've ever done. Originally, well from the beginning I felt there's a lot of, we are stressing out for time so I felt there's a lot of pressure, you know, to get the tracks done. I mean, I took the track some every night and kind of, you know, worked with it and did what I could, but I had an amp that I, you know, loved to have my heart set on using, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it didn't work out, you know. It's totally true, because he was an old school, you know, amp pedic tube amp, I don't think so. It's fucking awesome. Play that, the, the riff with me, it's the G, B, C, and you hold C instead of going right to it. Yep, take, like, what is the definition of successful? these days, you know, a lot of parents will say, you know, you know, go on American Idol and you know, make a lot of money and all that crap. But, you know, from a musician's standpoint, it should be to make good music. I mean, you look at what's, you know, successful in the mainstream world and it's all that like, bullshit. Plus, it's not even how it works. Entertainment, yeah. I would say. You know, I used my uh, Lakeland. It's made here in Chicago, a couple of cool blocks away that I love. Love it. Getting this motion song. Um, Let's see, and then use two other basses on other songs, my Warwick and two of them that I thought would sit well, and a French bass called The Ripper, old school, uh... This is Matthew, this is Mr. Yes, true. And uh, Gibson, that, you know, used for the more like, vintage sound, kind of cut through, but still have that bass presence. Um, I think it sounds awesome. awesome. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds awesome. Yeah, I was, I was real pleased with the, the tone that came out the other day, I was real pleased with it. I made a claim that I did not back up which was that I would be able to record all my drum parts in one day. And six days, seven days, seven days later, uh, they were completed. That's not it. And, uh, it's not your part, man. It's that we can't hear that. I'm recording at all. Like it's not I know. There. That's the problem. That's why I mute it. If it was up to me, it would be... What's on the recording? I'll bet you a billion trillion dollars that if you play that back right now, that's what's on there. I don't want to take. I don't have like wars. I'm just saying like I just if there's something that like stands out, I'm like oh fuck, you know this might sound that I just let's just like bam, try it. If it doesn't work, go back to the first one and then it's done. But we always like have these arguments and we take sides. Like it's not a war. It's not about doing what I want to do or doing what someone else wants to do. It's just about doing whatever is going to sound better to the song. That's all I care about. I also though. No, you didn't really scratch I also stuff. though did not. Uh, I've never recorded with like as top quality. I mean, like, just I've never recorded in such a quality place with like great microphones, great preamps, all that stuff. And that's when you finally find out that like, wow, you're not as good as you thought you were. <laughs> but I, I got them done, and they sound awesome. I really think they sound great. Um, with very little like having to go back and overdub, and, and I'm really happy with how they came out. Part of being in a band too, aside from making music, is you learn how to deal with people. I mean, like these guys are like family to me, and I'll argue with them just as much as I do with like my younger brother. But you know, end of the day, I mean, everyone in this band trust each other, and we're not gonna be trying to fuck each other over. So you know, it's all for the better. Working with Sean on vocals was really cool because he kind of just tried to cater to me uh, as far as like my environment goes. This is the vocal fort clubhouse. Enter the Batcave. 
he sort of built a fort in this room here, actually, uh, with lots of like foam and blankets, as you can see, and uh, things like that to just sort of deaden the sound. Uh, that way I had, you know, it was like my own vocal booth. It was isolated from everybody else, and he made me really comfortable. Um, I don't know, it just allowed me to get really intimate with my songs. I would do takes, and sometimes I would nail it. Uh, sometimes I wouldn't. He was really encouraging the whole time, and he understood exactly where I was going. He'd be like, "All right, that one's kind of close, but let's just try, like do it one more time." And a lot of times he was right. I just need to, you know, take a breather and try it again. After we're done recording, um, to get it mixed, Sean likes to use uh, Smart Studios in Madison, Wisconsin. I'll probably spent what a week in Madison all together. Yeah, two different trips. Well, Smart Studios was, was it was awesome to work there because uh, we, Crazy to be there. we just figured out, like, I mean, Sean was just telling us all the people who worked up there and pretty much Butch Vig, um, the drummer of Garbage, owns the studio and that's where they did the Nevermind uh, demos for Nirvana's record and just to be in that, that, that building, that just knowing that they were there and... Seeing that record on the wall, you know, with the Pumpkins records and it's like, you know, and you 10 million sold. It's just like, Death Cab yeah. was just there. It's just it's just cool. And then the board that we worked on was was from the seventies, and yeah. people, everyone from Zeppelin to John Lennon used that board. And it was just like Stevie Wonder, Aretha Franklin. Yeah, I mean, like the names. On. Tracks come from the computer, interfaces spread out through this old uh, little phone operator deal, and uh, and they all come into the console. Smart is in the same vein as a uh, gravity and even Sean's house as far as like the atmosphere goes you know oh, yeah. it feels like you're in somebody's house kind of you know there's nothing like too sterile about it you just you sit down and it's like you've lived there for a long time there's no like sleeps in a hotel every day it like takes up the whole bed this is Mark so I have to like come on <laughs> and sleep on my back because if I turn over I feel like I get too much uh you know action pelvis to ass it's kind of action. Um, I guess it was cool to, um, to collaborate with other people outside the band to bring just other minds into this record. Greg's phenomenal. I got together with him just for like an hour one day and without ever hearing any drafts of what he came up with for arrangements, um, the, the, when we came in one day with the, hearing the strings, it was just, it was beautiful, it was really cool. We'd, nothing needed to be said, nothing needed to be changed. Like, we just totally trusted him, because Genevieve worked on one of his projects before, and we heard we, what he could do, and it was it was an honor to work with him. It was really cool. Song, as a song, is pretty much, like, two minutes or less, and it's one of those songs where you just wait for the finale of the song. So that's, like, the bulk of it. It's, like, this huge ending, build up. It's like yeah. a constant crescendo kind of thing. And um, I'll, even, I'll play you the start of it so you get an idea of like the chords and everything. Um, she has two vocal melodies in this part. And we wanted to use the strings foreshadowing her vocal melody when the build up is done and she kicks in with this huge part. Yeah. And we wanted to have that be the strings in the beginning of the whole build up, kind of like foreshadowing the end of the song kind of type thing. So it's just the chords are it's like a cold play type vibe, really simple, steady. Because you're not, it's not string heavy. 
Yeah. But you've introduced them at the beginning of your album. Totally. It didn't come halfway through, like, oh, now it's strings. It's like, you know, the intro, like, there's going to be strings somewhere in the first song. And yeah. So um, the way that you just played that, there's this break for a couple beats. What if the guitars uh, come in, comes in with the high part, but the strings are playing the, the, uh, the lower part? Yeah. The other guitar part? Yeah, yeah the other guitar part. Ryan Suzuka actually, he's a dude from one comic book. Met there, he's on harmonica. some real Fender Rhodes and some, he played upright, he played some upright piano. Mm -hmm. And he was great, I mean, we, we, I went over to his house about once a week in November, just, and his, the funny thing is his hand would, would have, you know, like carpal, carpal tunnel, carpal tunnel, so he couldn't really practice with me, so all I could do is play him the songs, how they were written, and... And Ryan and was just watching there, so intently. No one was going on, yeah, he, knew, he, he knew where his fingers were supposed to be. Yeah, he, he just literally them. just charted it out, and then... When we came here for pre-production, he set up for the first time with us and played all the parts, and it was really cool to hear that come together without ever hearing him play before. I mean, like, we should also mention, like, he's the one who's been playing with us at the live shows, too, and, yeah, I mean, he, he really has been great. It's, it's good to see, I mean, just because, you know, we got so used to seeing each other for three months straight, you know, to have someone else on stage, it's just, you know, getting like a, um, even almost like an outside kind of point of view and his, his own take and his own spin on a few of the songs, like, he's, I've, I've had a blast, like, playing shows with him. He's a great guy. Yeah. He's really talented. Yeah. So we're just lucky to have a friend that is having fun and willing to help us out like that. It's funny because there's a whole intro to this record that has been described to me uh, in, in, in words or concepts or... But I've yet to hear any of it on tape. Mark has been working on a noise track um, on his uh, spare time in the other studio. Fucking scrape a bowl. And you know, I just hope that the segue is going to work out however he had planned, which I'm sure it will. We've pretty much played like some of our favorite venues within like a month or two months, and every show just I mean, there's been more and more people and more and more yeah, talk that, about everything. And that's the crazy feeling. The first time, you know, when you see somebody at a show and they're like, oh man, you know, we saw you at the Buckley tribute. Yeah. Like that. And we really try, you know, we make, we make a really strong effort to actually respond to people who write us letters and to, like right. give people the time of day when they talk to us after shows. Like it's, okay. it's so exciting to, you know, get to connect with people. I think there's a, a huge lack of connection and we've, Oh, we've had the ability to, uh, to you know, really just get to know some people. Like, we're about to play <laughs> one of our fans. She's she saw us at the Jeff Buckley tribute, I think, and she's been to like almost every single one of our shows since then. And she's about to have a housewarming party, you know, in like a few weeks. And we're actually just gonna go and play just to say thanks, you know. And that's so cool. Any band I've played with. You know, you get that one person that comes up afterwards like, oh, great job, that's it. Like, you never hear back from that person. With this band, like, it's the complete opposite. The people just keep coming back to the shows. I think every single person uh, 
that we would consider part of like our family, I guess, got to sing on the last song on the record. So that was really special to us. We're going to record these parts separately, I think, right? And then we're going to make them kind of round. Okay, so the first one, we're going to go like this. Listen! This is I Won't Give Up. With these songs, we had like a bunch of gang vocals and filled this whole room up with all our friends. And it was cool to, I mean, we, we always considered hearing those parts, but it was when the day came and we actually got to hear them and have our friends be a part of that. It just, it was really, it was really cool. This is our world view, you know, and uh, just like how we started with the open mic scene, like as their peers, we were interested in their world view. This is us reflecting today back on to you. There's a few songs that really do come off as like as if it's a live band on a stage right there, and uh, that's totally what I knew at least I wanted to get it sound like. It. To come out here, you know, to Chicago, meet these guys, and you know, make an album in a little over a year. It's just the best thing I could possibly ask for.